Welcome to the U.S. Office of Special Counsel's video series on prohibited personnel practices. Please be sure to visit our website at www.osc.gov to view the full series of videos. In this video, we will introduce the prohibited personnel practices, which are activities that are banned in the federal workforce because they violate the merit system through some form of employment discrimination, retaliation, improper hiring practices, or failure to adhere to laws, rules, or regulations that concern the merit system principles. This video will also discuss the process for filing a complaint and explain our authority to investigate and prosecute violations. In 1881, Charles Guiteau shot President James Garfield because Guiteau had expected a government job in exchange for supporting Garfield in the election. The country blamed the spoil system for Guiteau's actions and demanded a new system of filling government positions without favoritism or political connections. In response, Senator George Pendleton drafted the Pendleton Civil Service Reform Act. President Chester A. Arthur, a former beneficiary of the spoil system, signed the act into law on January 16, 1883. In place of the spoil system, which allowed unqualified and ethically dubious appointments, the Federal Civil Service would now be staffed through merit-based appointment. The new Civil Service Commission was empowered to administer competitive examinations to ensure that highly qualified applicants would be appointed, to administer rules and regulations for the management and conduct of civil service employees, and to objectively and fairly adjudicate employment disputes, such as claims of unlawful firing or demotion. After the Watergate scandal, the country again demanded reform to increase trust in an impartial civil service that acted without political favoritism. In 1978, Congress passed the Civil Service Reform Act, breaking the commission into separate agencies. Nine years later, the Whistleblower Protection Act created OSC as an independent federal investigative and prosecutorial agency charged with enforcing the merit system and protecting employees, former employees, and applicants for employment from prohibited personnel practices. OSC's independent role allows it to operate as a neutral party. Congress created the Merit System Principles as guidelines for managing the civil service. They emphasize competition, performance, and equality. They also call for protection from political influence, retaliation, and unfair punishment. The Merit System Principles are, one, recruit, select, and advance on merit and fair and open competition. Two, treat employees and applicants fairly and equitably. Three, provide equal pay for equal work and reward excellent performance. Four, maintain high standards of integrity, conduct, and concern for the public interest. Five, manage employees efficiently and effectively. Six, retain or remove employees based on performance. Seven, educate and train employees for better organizational or individual performance. Eight, protect employees from improper political influence. Nine, protect employees against reprisal for blowing the whistle on misconduct. In sum, the nine merit system principles are values that we aspire to in the civil service. By contrast, the prohibited personnel practices are the 14 specific activities banned in the civil service because they directly conflict with the values outlined in the merit system principles. Therefore, while agency officials have broad power when managing the federal workforce, they must not engage in discrimination, improper hiring practices, retaliation, or any other activity that violates the laws, rules, or regulations that concern the merit system principles. And unlike the merit system principles, the prohibited personnel practices are not guidelines. They are rules. Most federal employees, former federal employees, and applicants for employment can file a complaint alleging any of the 14 prohibited personnel practices by submitting a completed OSC Form 14, which can be found on OSC's website. The Form 14 is required by OSC's regulations to open a complaint of prohibited personnel practices and serves as the crucial first step in helping OSC to understand the basis of the complaint, including the specific PPPs being alleged. The Form 14 will ask specific questions based on the PPPs identified by the filer. It is important to answer the questions fully and completely. Additionally, the filer may attach relevant documents to the Form 14, such as disciplinary action notices. Once OSC receives the Form 14, the Case Review Division screens the complaint to ensure that the complaint is not outside of our jurisdiction. 
For example, if the filer is employed by an agency excluded from our coverage, then we cannot review the allegations. If we do have the authority to examine the allegations, and the complaint concerns prohibited personnel practices only, the complaint is sent to the Investigation and Prosecution Division for review and further investigation. IPD also has the authority to prosecute violations of the 14 PPPs, although most meritorious complaints resolve through settlements, which OSC facilitates between filers and their agency. IPD is comprised of attorneys and investigators at OSC's headquarters and three field offices, one in Michigan, one in Texas, and one in California. Generally, cases are assigned to headquarters and the different geographic field offices based on the location of the specific agency or facility at issue in the complaint. If the filer submits a complaint concerning PPPs and disclosures, as outlined in our video on whistleblower disclosures, the complaint is sent to OSC's Retaliation and Disclosure Unit. The assigned RDU attorney serves as the single OSC point of contact and performs a similar function to the IPD and DU attorneys. Cases are generally processed in the order received. However, some cases, based on their unique circumstances, will move to the top of the list of cases that the IPD or RDU investigator or attorney is reviewing. An example of a case that would move to the top of the list is one where OSC seeks to delay an agency from taking an employment action such as firing or geographical reassignment while OSC investigates. This is called a stay. Stays are only sought when the information shows an action will cause immediate harm and there are reasonable grounds to believe that the employment action was taken or is to be taken as a result of prohibited personnel practice. OSC can request a stay informally from an agency or seek a formal stay by filing with the Merit Systems Protection Board, known as the MSPB. One of the MSPB's roles is to act as an administrative court for federal employment claims. A former whistleblower faced a proposed removal just two months prior to her planned retirement. The agency used information from four investigations over five years to craft a removal that still lacked evidence for some charges. OSC filed the stay for the employee with the MSPB that delayed the agency from affecting her termination and allowed her to retire with full benefits. As stated earlier, OSC serves an investigatory role. When we are wearing our investigation hat, we are trying to uncover what happened. Did an official advocate for their relative's appointment? Did the employee engage in protected conduct? If yes, did the agency punish the employee for their protected conduct? When there is evidence of a violation, we don our prosecutorial hat and seek to correct the action for the employee. Corrective action means putting the injured party in the place they would have occupied if no wrongdoing had occurred. In the case of a wrongful suspension, that could mean seeking to have the agency repay an employee's lost salary. In other cases, OSC has sought job restoration for employees who were wrongfully fired. OSC can also seek systemic corrective action, which has a broader impact on the agency. For example, at OSC's request, agencies have recompeted positions where there was evidence of improper hiring actions and amended policies that conflicted with the law. In addition to seeking corrective action, OSC can seek to discipline wrongdoers. The legal standard for seeking disciplinary action is more difficult to meet than cases involving only corrective action. For cases where OSC has issued a prohibited personnel practice report finding that agency officials violated Title V of the United States Code, Section 2302B8, B9, or B14, an agency must propose disciplinary action against the officials in accordance with Title V of the United States Code, Section 7515. For all other cases, disciplinary action is only sought at the discretion of the special counsel and can involve removals, suspensions, or debarments. The accused official has the right to review the evidence, to hire a representative, and to have a hearing at the MSPB. However, the facts or law are not always on our side. There are some agencies or positions that the law will not allow us to investigate. In other cases, there is insufficient evidence to show that a violation occurred. For those situations, OOC will provide a letter explaining the factual and legal basis for our preliminary determination to close the complaint. At that time, the employee who filed the complaint has 13 days to respond to the preliminary decision and send additional information or documentation to support the allegations. 
If the employee cannot provide additional evidence, or the evidence submitted does not provide further support for the allegations, OSC will send a letter closing our inquiry into the matter. Where an employee has alleged retaliation for making protected disclosures or engaging in protected activity in their prohibited personnel practices complaint, OSC will also include an individual right of action letter, also known as an IRA, with the closure. The IRA can be used to file a claim with the MSPB. However, the IRA appeal must be filed within 65 days of OSC's determination. If you file a whistleblower retaliation case, it is very important to save everything that you send to OSC, a copy of your complaint, a copy of any emails or documents, etc. The MSPB will need this to show that OSC had a chance to review your case first. Instructions on filing a whistleblower reprisal appeal are located on the MSPB's website. For more information about the prohibited personnel practices, please access the other resources on our website or contact us with your questions. Thank you.